Hello, welcome to Shaman Sister Sessions, episode number 40. We are here to talk today about channeling, uh, considerations, safety, what's it all about, uh, the implications for us individually and societally. And I am Catherine Bird, and I'm here with my dear shaman sister, Michelle Hawk. And we host this podcast every week so that we can talk about all kinds of issues around spirituality, healing, um, our roles in society as healers, and uh, you know the coming evolutions as we're looking forward into the awakening process that we're all going through. And uh, this is a, a, a very important topic, I think, um, because both Michelle and I have been channeling for a very long time um, and have, I think, experienced different kinds, um, you know, different, sorry, turning off the phone, different um, ways of channeling. And we also have friends who channel and our clients at channel. Um, and it is a very, um, I don't know if it's, if it's trendy, <laughs> but there are a lot of people who are very interested in it. I, I think that's a fair, <laughs> yeah, I think that's a fair word, honestly, like channeling seems to be sort of the, the sexy thing in the metaphysical community right now. Yeah. That's, that's not a bad thing by any means, but it's just a... Um, I realized we hadn't done a channeling episode yet. Yeah. We talked around it a lot and we had uh, a few months ago, we had our dear brother Kai on and we did an episode on mediumship. So, which is one face of channeling. Mediumship is, um, is a way of looking at channeling. Uh, and yet we haven't really talked about it so explicitly. And uh, as Kat was saying, both she and I have a lot of experience doing this personally for ourselves and then also opening up the channel for our clients. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, we've had a lot of experiences recently and a lot of conversations recently about what's that going or how's that going for you? How's that going for your clients and noticing a lot of really interesting stuff coming up. So we have a lot to share. Today. We have a lot to share. Um, you know, one of the things that I found in my work is that I am I'm, I'm very good at helping people to open their channels or to uh, helping them to connect to maybe a different aspect of their ability to channel. Um, and, uh, you know, I have, de have developed some very specific uh, processes and practices around opening the channel and also the, being able to support that process. Um, I, I've seen a lot of people who've had their channel opened um, through some sort of spiritual practice or through a session with a practitioner and then have just felt like, oh my gosh, I'm totally open. I'm seeing, I'm hearing, I'm, I have all of these things happening. And um, now what? Ah! Right, and I don't know what to do with it. I don't know what to do with it. And there's a lot of people who are just having spontaneous experiences and it can be very confusing, intimidating, scary, all kinds of things. So let's just talk, let's start kind of at the beginning. Like what is, what is channeling? What does it mean? What is, what is it? What's it about? Mm -hmm. Well, channeling, and again, we've touched upon this over the course of our um, almost a year. We've been having these uh, this podcast for almost a year now. Yay, go us. And since channeling is such an, an important component of our work, we've talked around it a lot. Channeling is, and there are many ways of channeling. Uh, one of the more well-known ways is trance channeling. And I would think it's fair to say, Kat, that neither of us are trance channels. Uh, I mean, because there's the very extreme trance channel where the human allows an energy to come into their body and use their body to write, to speak, to move, and they have no recollection of what's going on. They don't remember. It's like they fall asleep and then they wake up and they have no idea what happened. Right. There's a very well-known trance this channel. 
A uh, well-known trans channel would be uh, Edgar Casey, who is deceased now, but he wrote many books and he described his channeling experiences where basically he would lay down on the couch and then he'd go in this channel space and all the stuff would happen and he'd wake up, but he wouldn't have any remembrance. It was only through recordings from other people recording the experiences that he knew what was happening. Mm -hmm. um, Bashar, Bashar. Is, is a very well-known entity who comes through it. Uh, I don't remember the name of the gentleman um, who channels him, but it's a Daryl, Daryl Unka, I believe is, is that right? Daryl, yeah. Daryl something. <laughs> I think right. it's Unka. Um, and he channels uh, Bashar, who is a, um, a Syrian sort of being, mm -hmm. um, I believe like a hybrid of a Syrian being, so an, a galactic being, and mm -hmm. comes through, comes into his body completely, and and channels through him. Right. There's a, um, a layer of that. And I think Kat and I are both in um, sort of this, not exactly trans channel, but again, allowing energies to enter the physical form. And I've heard Kat channel and I've seen Ch Kat channel and she's heard me channel and watched me do my work. And there's this layer of, okay, I'm allowing an entity to use my body, to use my voice, to use my hands but I'm still present and I, and it's like, I'm listening. I don't necessarily remember word for word, but it's like, I'm listening to a conversation and I, I'm able to pay attention. So I am present during the channel process and Kat, I feel that's a, a fair assessment of your. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's also very true. Um, and so that's sort of like, if we go trans channel and then we go, okay, then down here is the channeling where there is a being inside of your body coming in and they are speaking through you. Um, I know for me, I, my experience is, is sort of like my consciousness comes back here and sits sort of in this kind of lower, mostly on the, on the right hand side, for some reason, side of my brain. Um, and I have also heard that from other channels who, uh, are in that experience as well. It sort of feels like you are, your consciousness is rolling backward and something is coming in. Yeah, that's uh, and I was paying less attention to that until you pointed it out, I, I don't know, a couple of years ago or so. Um, and then I recognized, yeah, that I have that same feeling of, it's like I take a step back. I don't leave my body. And um, that's one of the things that I teach people when I'm teaching channeling practices is like, you don't have to, um, you know, with the metaphor that Kai was using back in our med mediumship episode is you're not getting out of the car. You know, if the car, you, this is the vehicle, the um, human energy vehicle you're just sitting in the passenger seat and somebody else is driving but you're still there so yeah it's like this okay i'm moving into the back space the back body and then allowing somebody to use the functional channel in the front to speak and to uh to communicate but i still get to hear everything that's going on right so we might see that um in you know maybe abraham abraham hicks is a very famous channel um and Mm -hmm. Esther Hicks, who channels Abraham. Yeah. Right, Esther, um, Esther Hicks. And so, you know, so there's that. And we can be channeling for many different reasons. Um, I know that for me, when I do healing sessions, there is, um, there is an aspect of working with Dr. Spirits, with working with spiritual beings who are there to assist with, with um, helping with the energetic work that's happening. Mm -hmm. um, or coming in to deliver a message. Yeah. And, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, channeling isn't always entities either. You know, mm -hmm. that's another, a lot of the very well-known channels uh, that we see, or a lot of the human channels that we see who are very well-known, they work with a specific entity or a very specific group of entities all the time. So for example, Esther Hicks channels Abraham, who's a group of non-physical entities. Um, Edgar Casey, I think he channeled one entity, right? I, I can't remember through, I, I haven't read his books in so many years, but okay. um, yeah. Yeah, and um, and then Bashar is an entity who uh, who this gentleman brings forward, and that's not always the case. And so, and also there is, um, I've I've encountered a lot of people too who, when they find out I'm a channel, they ask, "Who do you channel?" Right. And I say, "Well, I channel a lot of things and a lot of beings um, and entities and 
energies and information. So it's allowing really basically, again, to go back to our core question of what is channeling, creating space in your body or in your energy field, in your consciousness to allow something that is in, that exists currently, like kind of only in the energetic plane to come in and use your vehicle to interact in a different way with the world, to communicate, to share a message. It's bringing something into physical plane, vocal plane to allow it to be present here. Right. It's, we are, um, it's, it's basically, you're just allowing yourself to be an instrument. And so the music is flowing through you and the music can be all, there's all different kinds of, of, of music out there and different kinds of songs that are being played and you are, and still there is the one instrument which can be utilized in so many different ways. So channeling can show up in ways that we don't even sometimes associate with channeling because we see it as being Bashar or, you know, a, uh, Esther Hicks or, you know, these different people. And we see that, but then we don't sometimes recognize that it's happening on regular basis within maybe our healing practice or our, our meditation, spiritual practices. Mm -hmm. um, so it can come out of our mouths as words. We can be receiving information that's coming um, through us. So we're receiving information, we're hearing it, and then we're able to utilize that information maybe just in our business or in our life in some way. Mm -hmm. um, it can be written, so we can be doing um, writing where it's actually just kind of flowing through us. There's so many books that are channeled, um, and even books that we don't, if, a lot of times there's musicians or artists or writers who are channeling in their work. And it is when you see someone and they're so present and so focused and open and they're creating something that's just beautiful and amazing. A lot of times that really is they're so open and tapped in and utilizing energies to be able to create these things in the world. Mm hmm. There's a, and so Kat, you were mentioning music. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we see this when artists or writers talk about, oh, I was in the zone and it just poured out of me. Or when we're doing uh, stream of consciousness journaling, and then you read it and all of a sudden you have, oh, wow, that's a chapter of a book, or that's a really beautiful poem. It's just being that conduit space to allow something that is in the energetic field to pour through you. For, as far as the creative stuff goes, I've formulated this thought, this thesis, I guess, a few years ago, as far as I'm concerned, imagination doesn't exist. Imagination, like thinking that we're birthing something out of nothing or creating something that's as far, everything already exists. So I real, as soon as I realized this, and as soon as it came, when I started doing my channeling work years ago, that I had this idea, I was like, wow, I'm not coming up with anything new. And that's okay. That's beautiful. It doesn't detract from the process. It actually enhances and informs it to think what I'm doing is I am giving a voice. I'm giving life to something that already exists, that the world is now ready to receive, that I am ready to receive. And the planet as a whole, if we think about it this way, where imagination does not exist, like nobody is creating anything, we're just bringing to earth, you know, higher and higher vibration things that we're now ready for all this conscious art, all these new technologies, that's, you know, tech, technology coming from the galactics. I mean, we can get into that a little bit later too, but we're, we're translating. Right. We're translating. And I think that this, this word translating is very important because a lot of times when people start channeling or they start being interested in it and they wonder if they're doing it or not, um, there's the experience of I'm, I'm getting like, because Sometimes it's, I'm hearing something and I'm saying it, but a lot of times it is, there's something coming, it's an energy, it's a frequency, like there's no words there and I'm translating it. I am become the translator of the energy that's coming through. And sometimes that can take a, a, a while to, to kind of master that as you can imagine, like if you were a translator at the UN and trying to translate, you know, one language to another language, 
it takes a while to get very proficient at being able to translate what this is into what this is. And so sometimes at first it's, it can be clunky and it can be like, huh, huh, I don't know if that's the right word. And um, hmm, I don't know if I have the right vocabulary that this energy is looking for right now, but this is as close as I can get. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, we are the, the translators in a lot of ways and sometimes we translate really well and sometimes we don't get it so good and, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've heard, you know, so just let's shift into kind of, well, what kinds of things do we channel? We've listed a lot already and Kat, I know I've heard you and witnessed you in transformance events, channeling these sounds and these tones. Are, that are a different language, really. And then that's pouring through. And I can tell you from the receiving side, having witnessed that, even though it was not in modern English and intelligible, auto, like auditorially intelligible language to me, I still knew what you were saying. I still knew that I could feel it, you know? So there's that level of translation as well, is sometimes we don't have to know. And sometimes there's going to be energy or language or sounds coming through us that don't need an English translation in order to be perfectly communicated. Exactly. And that's what I received when I was like, why, why do I speak in tongues and do these weird things to people and like sing at their bodies and things like that. And it was like, because if they knew what you were saying in English, they would mind fuck it and it would be a big deal. Like they, their soul in their energy field is getting this information. That's all they need. Just be good with it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, we want to know, we're so like, I have to know what's going on. I have to know what it means. I have to know why this is happening. I know we have to know what it is doing. And when we're really in that as a channel, sometimes we really have to let go of our need to know everything and our need to analyze what exactly is going on it's nice we can ask and be and you know ask those questions why is it why is this this way and we'll probably get some sort of answer but we don't really need to know everything about these experiences because they're operating on levels that are beyond our mind yeah cat what would you say in regards to because uh, i know you channel lots of different sorts of things and I channel lots of different sorts of things. And, uh, and I know plenty of people in that realm as well, but I know there are also people who maybe specialize or maybe like there's one entity in particular that comes through them. Do you have any thoughts about that? Well, um, you know, I believe that for a lot of people, um, what we're, what we are, a lot of what we are channeling is actually coming from our higher self, mm -hmm. from the, you know, the higher self that is directly connected to us. And, um, you know, some of the information that I've been taught is that that higher self is actually connected to other beings that that higher self that over soul is connected to other beings maybe a galactic being and maybe another being that lives here on earth someplace else and maybe another being from the past and the future and um you know all of these different beings are you know a specific uh uh you know ascended master or or whatever that there are these like little families of of soul connections and so that those beings are easier for us to connect to than if we were like, I just really want to channel Jesus. I just really want to channel Jesus. And maybe Jesus is not going to be the easiest thing for you to channel, but maybe this other being is more connected to you. And so that's why that being comes. Um, I've also uh, heard from um, sort of being saying that they are always looking. They're always like, they're always checking the field and looking to see who's available. And if that frequency is a match enough to start to connect to. And if that person is going to be willing to do the work to continue the connection so that they can start to bring through some of the information that they're desiring to bring through and that they're always available. Their experience of time and space is so radically different from ours that 
they're like, you know, seeing the little lights of us pop up and be like, oh, what's over there? Maybe I'll go check that out. And so one being, like we see a lot of people who, uh, you know, how many people are channeling Mary Magdalene, right? And you might go, well, how can all these people be channeling Mary Magdalene? That doesn't make any sense. But because of she would not have these same constrictions that we have, she could be pretty much every place all the time, communicating with thousands of people at the same time. And um, I, I think it's interesting that some people have this just like one being and connection that they're bringing through. Um, and I think it speaks to the, the power of the connection that those souls have, almost like maybe even a soul contract, we could say, that to bring through a certain um, knowledge or information that's, that's needing to come through. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. And um, I know I've read uh, some of the work of Lee Carroll, who channels Cryon. So that's another example of um, a human channel who channels one specific um, group of entities. Cryon is a, a collective of non-physical entities. And, and it's really interesting, you know, with some of that, I feel as though uh, the depth, you know, where these channels are well known and these entities are well known because they produce massive amounts of material. They're downloading their, these human channels with books upon books upon books and, you know, massive hours and hours and hours of recordings, basically, which is how we I think that's how channeling entered the popular consciousness is through in the first place is through these specialists, I'll call them these specialist trance channels who were able to connect with one or a group of really specific consistent entities who were able to offer massive wealth of information, which I think really opened the door for many people to realize that this was even a thing and oh I'm not crazy and oh actually maybe this is coming through which then is allowing us also to diversify a little bit and maybe bring through you know so I'm um, just talking about what what do we channel we've listed a, a whole bunch of different things I've channeled animals animal guides um, like the animal totems that we've talked about that before actually um, channeled deceased loved ones. So in medium practice where I'll, I'll bring through ancestors or I'll bring through um, I, some of the most really powerful channeling work I did was for a friend of mine whose child passed away and I brought through his child. That was very, um, obviously a very potent experience, very emotionally charged, but very healing all around. Um, channeling various galactic guides, channeling um, forest spirits, channeling elementals, channeling spirit collective, which I do, I think I use that as a different word for what Kat was talking about with channeling the higher self. That's my blanket statement of, okay, it's of the light and love, it's of spirit, it's not a really a specific entity, it's just kind of the general forecast of what's going on. Yep. Yeah. Um, uh, I've also, Michelle, seen you channel, um, uh soul parts like oh, yeah. soul, soul parts of people that you're working on and um bringing through maybe another lifetime from from another place that is needing to um have a voice or archetypal energies um and an archetype that's coming through yeah um and you know i i so there's all of these things that we can channel Mm -hmm. And all of these ways that um, this, this happens to people. So like, how does this happen to people? <laughs> how do I they do it? Like, how, how? I don't know. Um, <laughs> the, the I don't know is kind of the short answer, but yeah. <laughs> right, the longer answer is, uh, you know, I think Kat, going into a little bit of what you were talking about of creating space, there's, first of all, there's an, an awakening of something that happens. Like, how do you channel? Well, first you have to start doing it, right? You wake up to it. Either you, em, uh, you employ a specific practice to open your channel. I know that that's something that you do very well. I love that you do that. And I've seen you do that for a lot of people um, where it's really on purpose. Okay, I'm going to open my channel now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put up my hand and say to the beings, here I am, I'm ready. And, uh, 
And so you can do that with practices or there's also the spontaneous, what the fuck is happening? I don't know what's going on. And then later you figure out it's channeling. Right. Um, I think I was somewhere in between, honestly. I think I, and we've spoken about this a little bit before, but just my, my spiritual awakening was pretty darn gentle as far as this happens, you know, where as a, a young child being very sensitive, it never occurred to me that I couldn't do all these things, you know, and reading books about magic and reading, um, you know, all my favorite stories were based in people having these supernatural abilities. And so then of course I was imagining, okay, I also have these abilities, but remember imagination doesn't exist. That's me actually saying, yes, I can do this thing. And then figuring out, oh, this is a real thing that people do. Well, why can't I channel? And I think actually I remember it was it was a few years ago. Kat, have you ever seen the show Long Island Medium? No. <laughs> no. Okay. Well, it's <laughs> it's a a show about mediumship or about this woman named Teresa. Um, I don't remember her last name. She's a a medium and she lives in Long Island. She's got you know like the fingernails out to here and like the poofy hair and the you know very like an accent. Anyway, she's very Long Island and but she's a fantastic medium and she'll channel deceit people's deceased loved ones and this was I, several years ago I want to say at this point I was watching this show just out of curiosity like what the heck is this Long Island medium and I remember the first instance that I consciously asked to channel something was after I watched that show I was like I can do that there's no reason I can't do that and then I brought forth a deceased loved one of my family just no problem. And this is a person I'd never met before. This was someone who passed before I was born. And I was speaking with my mom and describing this person to her. She said, yep, exactly. That's to a T. And saying, here are these things that he wants to say. She's like, yep, that sounds just like him. So it was immediately validated just from me deciding, oh, I can do that and then immediately did it. So there's the like, put up the hand, open the channel practices. I want to do this thing. There's the, my channel is open. What the fuck do I do? And then there's Michelle version of like, I can do that. And, and then okay. I was definitely like the channel. Uh, this is open. What the fuck do I do? Because um, I was receiving sort of these little breadcrumbs of information that I needed to be kind of changing myself and my life and that I had something else that was coming for me and something else to do. And I was like, well, like I should meditate because that's what people say you should meditate. So that's a thing. So I'm going to sit here. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to meditate. And I would pretty quickly start just shaking and sweating and moving and making all these crazy sounds. And then I was speaking in tongues and then I had things coming through me and I was like, ah, so it was, uh, it, it, there was a lot of like, blah, 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 blah. Like it was, it was stuck in my throat. I had, you know, I had really done no, I'm very little per No, I come, look, come on. I done like no personal development work. So, you know, my, my energy centers were stuck. So it would just get stuck in my throat. And I'd be, ah, no, 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 no. it was just, it was, it was so challenging. I was, I was just a mess. And from there had to really figure myself out and, and practices and all of those things. And I think the reason for the awakening that I had was because I really can relate and help people through their awakening, through grounding and stabilizing those energies. And through the process of opening the channel and being able to navigate, you know, the different ways that it opens for people. And, you know, so it, it, it can be done. Really, anyone can channel. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it can be opened. And there are processes that can be utilized. You know, I've sort of figured out, um, I figured out over the years things that um, create, like you said, create that space, create the energetic space for it to occur. And, um, and then we can ask, we can be invocating a certain frequency of being so that we're being very specific about who we're calling in. Mm -hmm. And, um, you yeah. know, as we're going into that, let's, let's talk about, um, are there any like processes, other processes you want to talk about 
before well, we I want to I want to finish the how first you know so okay. how do we channel and then um, absolutely but so first of all you wake up to it whatever means that takes either consciously opening or what the fuck is going on or the Michelle version of yes please um, and so wake up and then grounding you talked about grounding it in right so when you're channeling the this is something that I tell people, my clients and my students who are working with channeling is the bigger your container, the more energy you can hold and the more comfortable it will be for you. People who have really uncomfortable channeling experiences don't have the foundation in place to hold it. So doing the personal practice, doing the grounding meditation, doing a having a physical embodiment practice will support you to be a better channel. Yes. It's not all up here. It's not just about, oh, my third eye is wide open. No, my it's root chakra really needs to be not. It's, it's very, it's very much an embodied experience. Um, and so, you know, for me, what I found was I had to go deep into physical practices, into grounding and declaring, into um, you know, really balancing my system and working a lot. For me, I had an old spinal spinal injury from when I was 20, and I had I've I had to start really working it and working my spine and opening up the scar tissue and and going through the processes of doing the work to heal that part of my body because. Um, you need to be able to allow the energy to flow through your system. And the more open that you are, the more easeful you are in your body, the easier it is for that energy to move through without it getting like all stuck and jammed into little places. And, um, you know, so it's, it's, it's very much connected into the physical body. For some people, it's, doesn't seem to be like, it's, you know, it's very up here and it's not connected into the physical body. But I believe that for um, longevity, for safety, for um, being able to, to be rooted inside so that your physical body is being taken care of through the process and you're aware when your physical body might be suffering from the experience, that it needs to be uh, rooted and grounded inside the physical form. Yeah, I, I love that you said that. Even the channels who don't seem to have it as an embodied uh, an embodied practice, it is still going through the physical system. So the grounding and clearing really go hand in hand. Your channel, your energy centers, your your spine in particular, you know, that's really important. You know, so the fact that you were working so much on your spinal injury, you're creating a clear channel to allow that energy to enter your body and move through you. Grounding, clearing, I will to that also add your live, your life in general needs to have that same overhaul right you know so if your house is a mess if your work is a mess if your relationships are a mess like you need to clear that up because that will create you know think about if you've got mess anywhere it's easier for stuff to get in there and like you know bugs to hang out and mold to grow same energetically if you have a mess in your energetic sphere, either you know in your house or your life or your job or your relationships, energy will get stuck there and it will fester and it will cause problems. So you need to be grounded not only in your body and create the clear channel in your body, but the clear channel in everything around you, in your nutrition, in your home, in wherever you're doing your work. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. How, what, what other hows are there? What <laughs> other hows are there? Um, yeah. how do you channel? How do you channel? Well, we can go through, um, like the, the rules, the channeling rules, some other things. Yeah. Let's, let's, why don't you give your rules on channeling? My rules for channeling are number one, I stay completely present throughout the whole time. That's one of the reasons that I'm not a trance channel is because that freaks me out and I don't want to be, I never want to be uh, and that's something that I consciously chose. I never want to not know what's going on in my body and my immediate sphere. So that's my rule. Number one is I stay completely present the whole time. Number two, the beings, energies, entities, whoever is coming into my channel space must be of the light and love have to be completely 100% of the light and love. Otherwise they don't get in and they must identify themselves. I want to know who is coming into my energetic field. Even if they identify themselves as spirit collective, if they pass the like of the light and love check spirit collective check, that's good enough. But any refusal to identify is not of the light and love. So they can't come in. 
Number three, I am allowed to close the channel space at any time. That's my safety mechanism that I reserve for myself, where if I feel that, okay, I need to be done or it's too much for me or whatever reason I have, I shut it down and they get out of my energetic sphere. The channel is closed. So that's number three. And then number four, so there are my four rules. Number four is whoever is using my sphere, whatever entity, energy, uh, being, etc., is using my body, my energy field, must be working in service to the light and love. Otherwise, they get kicked out. So, and I say this, um, Kat, you've seen me do this. Like you were mentioning the soul fragments and past lives and some of the archetypal energies. Wherever there, I'm channeling something that holds a lot of pain, that's the only time I've really felt the need to employ, um, employ that fourth rule where I'll be working with, with channeling a, a soul fragment that was wounded, which is why it broke away. And it'll start by you know introducing itself or saying who it is, and then it'll get really angry or really upset, and it'll start throwing all these really horrible things out. And as soon as it does that, I make it stop. And I, or I'll ask it like, is you, um, is the fact of you expressing this pain conducive to the healing and conducive to the light and love? And then if I get a yes for that, and I get a yes from my client who I'm working on and, and they understand, okay, it's going to sound really nasty, but ultimately it, it's helpful. Then, then I'll let it through. If that's a no, then I don't let it through. And I, I kind of do some healing work to calm it down and, and help release some of that, that really harsh feeling so that then it can be brought through in a healthy way. So there's my four rules for channeling. I am completely present throughout the whole time. I only bring through beings and energies of the light and love and they must identify themselves. I can close the channel space at any time. And if, or they are only allowed to be talking and only allowed to be present as long as they're working in service to healing and the light and love. Thank you, Michelle. I love that. Yeah. Um, okay. How about you? So, oh, I don't know if I have such like specific rules of that, but I mean, but, you do have practices. but I have, I have a lot of practices and processes of how we do this and um, some really important things. So there are some definite important aspects of this work that must be considered. Mm -hmm. uh, first, I think to give voice to the fact that a lot of people, when they first open, they'll open up. And they're just like, I'm open for business. And here I am, open channel. I'm an open channel right now. And uh, this can sometimes not be for the best for the person because it's like there's so many things just kind of like scoping about being like, okay, who's open? Who's open? And we can attract beings that maybe aren't of the light and love and probably aren't going to do anything bad or, or cause any harm. But they're just, it's just a waste of time and energy. It doesn't really give value. It doesn't give anything good. It's fun to be in an earth body. Mm -hmm. Really. Yeah. There are plenty of beings who will come in, like they'll scope out, oh, their channel is open. Yeah, I want to be on earth. Sweet. And they'll jump right in and, you know, kind of do the thing in the earth body. Yeah. So they, they like it. It's fun. Um, but it, it's not really of benefit to you or anybody else. So there is this aspect of discernment that we must have when we have an open channel. Um, uh, a lot of times people, their channel opens and then they have a very challenging experience of, well, I'm sleeping and I've got these beings coming in at night and I've got this and this is happening and, and this is happening all day long. And, and, um, you know, it's exhausting and I'm not getting enough rest and all of these things. And, uh, generally that can be very much remedied and cured by having a, um, a very strong no and an ability to say no, to set a boundary. I always say that like for channeling, like I'm open now, I'm closed now, I'm not available now. Like if something shows up and you don't want to be in participation with it, I'm not available now, come back tomorrow between, you know, at this time, I'll let you know when I'm available. And the beings will be like, oh, okay. Um, they're, they're showing up because it's open and there is no, there's no container. So I believe that having a container for the experience is really important to be able to hold our energy safe, to be able to hold our rest and our real life, normal human experience uh, sacred 
as it should be. You don't have to be constantly in service because this is an aspect of who you are. That's a really important point. I know I've worked with, I had to get over this myself, honestly, and then I had to help my clients get over it, where when I was woken up at all hours of the night with messages or whatever, mm -hmm. I used to, you know, years ago when this was starting, I would be like, oh, okay, all right, and I'll make an effort to remember, or I'll write it down or, or something, and then um, wake up the next morning, and I'm tired, and like, yeah, I wrote it down, but I can barely understand what I wrote anyway, and I'm just grouchy, and like, why didn't you let me sleep? But okay, it's really important, you know? And then eventually I got to the point where like, you know, F that, like, I need my rest. Like you come back during business hours and like, I'll open my, my meditation space and then I'll say, okay, now I'm ready. And it's much healthier for me. And it's actually better service to those messages. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. People get really interrupted sleep a lot because that's when, again, we're naturally in that unconscious. You are open. Yeah, we're more open naturally. So set aside half an hour in your day when you can be open for business. Yeah, and, and close it down. Yeah. I'm not closed for business. Thank you for coming. I'll let you know when I'm available again. Yes. And when you, hours. <laughs> yeah, when you start book bookending these experiences, they stop running your life. They stop taking over and um, and, and you, you are no longer, a lot of times people almost use this as some sort of, I hate to say it, but it's some sort of like, almost like victim experience. Like I'm so open and I have these things visiting me and I have all of this stuff. Instead of just saying, no, you're not allowed to be here right now. You need to leave. I am not available. I'll be available tomorrow. I'll let you know when. Thank you. And, um, you know, this is just a, a piece on, on boundaries and, most of us have shitty boundaries. We come from homes where we have bad boundaries. We did a whole, I think we did a whole episode on boundaries a while, a long time ago. So if boundaries is your thing, please watch that episode because we did a whole episode on it. And um, if boundaries in general weren't good in your home, aren't good in your relationships, you don't have a good time with boundaries, this, this will push you uh, because you have to develop good strong, healthy boundaries when dealing with energies and beings. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about what happens if you don't. And, you know, to a certain extent, like, yeah, these beings are mostly non-physical entities or actually I mean entirely non-physical entities. And yet they can seriously mess up your life. They can mess up with your health. They can affect the health and well-being of your physical body. They can wreak havoc in all sorts of areas. So yes, it is a non-physical entity, but it can have very real effects for how it messes with your life. It's something to be taken really seriously. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, one thing to just kind of look out for is if, you know, sometimes we get beings that come through and they are promising you something or they're, um, they're sexualized. You know, I've, 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 uh, talked with people who've had, oh my gosh, this being came and she like made love to me and it was like this amazing thing. And then eventually she started to just like torture me mm -hmm. and, you know, um, or they're telling you that you are the second coming of Christ or that you are somehow going to save the world or like kind of like giving, they're trying to give you something or they're telling you to do something. They're giving you orders to do something. You have to do this. Um, beings that are of the love and light are very can, connected to free will. And they don't like, they don't, wouldn't even, they wouldn't even think of the concept of being that way. Yeah. The um, also trying to negotiate with you or trying to, um, say, okay, well, I'll give you this thing if you do this or yeah. create a dependence relationship, like a codependent relationship. That's also not of the light and love. So those are some really good signs of beings that are either trying to manipulate you or again, taking advantage of the fact that you have an open channel or who just like fucking around. Like there's a lot of chaos magic out there. Yeah. And since earth is a free will planet and since we have a lot of chaos magic going on, it's a really juicy thing for some of these entities to come and continue to mess with it and stir the pot. Yeah. So just like paying attention also to other things that are coming up, like, oh, I just had this idea that I wanted to go to do something that's very out of character for you. 
Mm -hmm. um, if you are all of a sudden wanting to engage in behavior that seems like something that you haven't really been into before, especially in terms of sex, drugs, alcohol, you know, gambling, like any like of the lower, the lower base behaviors, if all of a sudden you're like, oh, I'm having these ideas to go and do this thing. Just a thing to look at because sometimes, you know, those beings, if they can have an experience in a body while someone is engaging in a base behavior, super fun and yummy and juicy. So uh, they're, they're going to make those suggestions. If, if they're there, then just be like, mm, no, thank you very much. That's not what we're doing. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. And, and it will be easier for them to take over if your vibration is lower. If you're yeah. lowering your vibration through choosing, uh, choosing activities or choosing substances that aren't necessarily good for your health, it will be easier for them to come in and continue to perpetuate that, uh, that choice. Yeah, so just be aware of what you're doing for your vibration. You want to connect to a high vibrational being, your, your system has to be in a high vibration. So anything that's lowering your vibration needs to be looked at wherever it is in your life. The old addictions, the old patterns, the old behaviors, uh, we all have to deal with it. And, you know, we never stop growing. So it doesn't mean you're bad. It doesn't mean anything, you know, you're not going to be spiritual and enlightened and amazing and a super great healer or channel or medium. Um, it just means, oh, here's another thing to look at. Okay, that's super uncomfortable. All right, let's deal with it. Yeah. Let's talk about compatibility a little bit. I know we've spoken about this in a couple different episodes, one of which was when we had Amateo as a guest to speak about channeling the galactics. Um, I think if I were to recommend to somebody who wanted to start channeling, uh, and we did talk about this a little bit then, I think, Kat, you were recommending that people start with their higher selves. I would second that and then also from there stick with either currently earth-based beings or beings who have been incarnated on earth and who know what it means to be in a physical body, like the doctor spirits, like the ascended masters. Right. So doctor spirits are, are, I've found some of the easiest to work with as far as like, you're in a healing session. I call upon and invoke the presence of a doctor spirit, or if you have someone in mind, you can say their name. Um, but they've been incarnate. And so their frequency is similar. And like you said, Michelle, when we talk to Amateo, like the galactic frequency is radically different. They're non-terrestrial beings. Mm -hmm. um, and some of them are not even really truly living, I think, in like bio form anymore, or like their, their system is so radically altered from ours or certain, you know, archangels, um, you know, these frequencies are so different from ours they can be very challenging to the system mm -hmm. there's a yeah and they are alien in every sense of the word you know and it's not a bad thing the i referenced earlier the technology you know we are as a society being downloaded and the internet and other um uh, you know, solar technology and uh, these really massively important evolutions in our ability to create global, sustainable, networked systems. Uh, I do believe, and actually there are many sources that have said and agree upon, channeled independently, that a lot of that is coming from galactics where people are channeling like these divinely inspired, beautiful ideas, again, channeling ideas, not knowing where they're coming from necessarily, but we're being gifted advanced technology. Right. From the galactics. And then, I mean, you can see where like you'll have an idea and if you don't act on it, somebody else is kind of like all of a sudden it's a, it's a thing, it's a business, it's, it's out there and you're like, wow, that's great. I had that idea. Well, yeah, it was out there. It just was kind of going through the collective. Right. 
like uh, you were talking about the different, uh, you know, people are, are people and these entities and energies are looking for, okay, who's an open channel. This energy is ready to come to earth. Who's ready to receive it and who's going to do something with it. Right. Who has the capability, who has the knowledge to be able to bring it to fruition. Yeah. Um, That's yeah. really interesting. You know, a lot of these, um, you know, look at the history of scientific evolution and all these ideas. It's, um, People, and there's a name for this phenomenon. I don't remember exactly what it is, but all of a sudden, if you look throughout human history, multiple societies back in the day when we didn't have this ease of global communication, multiple people all over the world would all of a sudden invent the same thing, like within a very short period of each other. So there's this collective vibration that people are tuned into, again, where these entities aren't necessarily communicating it only to one person either because they don't care about who gets the credit necessarily it's like it's ready to come to earth who's gonna say yes to this yeah, yeah. so I just want to go back to for a second um, we were talking about uh, the different frequencies and the different energies and so something that I have seen in myself at different times and in and with clients is that as you're going through the process of shifting your because like if they're at this level and you're here you have to be they're coming down and you're going up and so they're actually shifting um a lot of things within your system and starting to do you know upgrades and and move things out that that aren't shouldn't be there and all kinds of stuff and so let's just talk a little bit about some of the almost like the symptoms <laughs> that yeah. can come up and uh, you know, where you can get really tired um, and need to get a ton of sleep. Mm -hmm. um, and that can be just like almost like what is wrong with me? I'm sleeping 12 hours all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. And it really is because the system is being shifted and it's changing so radically that the sleep is the only way that you're able to actually keep up with what's going on with you. Mm -hmm. I want to uh, also reference the heat. Kat, you were mentioning, especially early on when you were channeling, a lot of heat in your system. Mm -hmm. Think of like an electric blanket, for example. The way that an electric blanket produces heat, the way that it's manufactured is inefficient wiring because inefficient electrical connection produces heat. When you have a being or an energy that you're channeling who is very compatible with yours, it's not going to produce heat in that same way because it's an efficient connection. It's like, okay, we're both about here. Great. It's going to feel better in my body. It's going to take less energy for me to connect with them. It's going to feel more easeful and my body is not going to go through the ringer. When you're channeling an entity, and I think galactics are a really good example of this because they're a very different vibration. It's not about being higher or lower even. It's just about like, you know, where, regardless of where it is, it's very different from yours. So there's a lot of heat that's produced in your system. The wiring, so to speak, is very inefficient and it's burning through your minerals really fast. Yeah. That's another one is you're gonna need to up your mineral supplement and your supplements in general. So it really is like, um, yeah, it, as a human, you know, bioform, right? Like we have to take care of the system and that heat, can be extremely, um, it burns through the minerals, it taxes the kidneys, um, the water, right? We are so much water. And then you start pumping heat through a water system and it taxes the kidneys, which is your vitality. And so then it's like you're suffering then all of a sudden from almost like an adrenal fatigue. Um, and you just are like, wow, I just, I feel, horrible. So, um, upping the minerals, you know, I really believe in, in bone broth, um, and, uh, you know, feeding the blood. I know that once I was a vegetarian, when I was nine years old, when I started going through this process and I started channeling and doing this work, I started getting dreams and messages that I needed to eat meat. I started eating red meat. Um, and I still, to this day, it's like, I like I have to eat red meat in order to, to sustain and stabilize the system that I have. And I know that there's a lot of like, well, we just need to be open. We need to, 
just eat raw food and we need to just like maintain this kind of system. But for me, these energies, I need to eat more mineralized food and uh, lots of root vegetables and lots of cooked food. That's what sustains my body and my digestive system and, and to be able to handle the, the energies that, that I'm moving through my system. So don't just follow whatever like food, fad, you should do this. Really ask and receive what it is that your body needs. Mm -hmm. Some people do really well with the, the raw fruits and veggies, etc. Although what I've noticed in the people who are doing this kind of work who sustain themselves on primarily raw, which is a very high vibration, they are also not the people who are living in contact with a lot of, of humans. <laughs> You know what I mean though? They're living out in the middle of nowhere and they don't talk on the phone and they don't have the internet and they, um, you know, somehow people find them for healing work and they do very high vibration work, but they can't interface with the rest of the world or they choose not to, or some combination of those. So again, it's not a bad thing. It's whatever works for your body and your system, but also I am a firm believer in whatever spiritual practice, this is regardless, we're channeling and everything, whatever healing work you do, whatever spiritual practice you do must be conducive and compatible with the kind of lifestyle you want to lead. Mm -hmm. You still want to use the internet and you still want to talk on the phone and you still want to have friends in the city and like be around people you're probably going to need to supplement your system with some really grounding nutrition. If you're cool with living off in the middle of the woods and having no social contacts, like, yeah, the raw lifestyle might be for you. I'm just, I've just noticed that pattern. Yeah. You know. And, you know, it really is, is tuning in. And this aspect of tuning in, I think is really important. So Michelle said that she's like asking like, who are you and what do you want? Um, and, for a lot of people, we're maybe not this like clear audience. We don't have like, oh, my name is so-and-so and this is who I am and I'm, yes, I am this. So sometimes we, you'll get that, yes, I am the love and light or, and so we can sit there going like, okay, well, I'm not getting this vocal information. So the way that we can actually receive that and understand it is, okay, who are you? Can you, like, can you reach my heart? and being training yourself to be present in your meditation practice with your heart training yourself to feel the front the back the sides of the heart the entire space around your heart to build the heart system so that it's very present for you and so that when energy is coming through maybe you don't hear or see but energy is coming through you and can it reach your heart okay yes that feels wonderful. That feels very connected to my heart. It's very present with my heart. Okay, what is coming through me right now? And then that is coming, you know, then going into like your healing practice or going into writing in your journal or whatever is being called for you to do. Just to put that in there, if you don't have those uh, particular, here I am, yes, this is who I am. Um, you can still use this discernment to be able to feel good and safe. We're going to go a little bit over today because we have, I know we have a few more things to say, to feel that good and safe inside the body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that discernment is huge. And then the, sen the way that you cultivate that is through building your sensitivity. Uh, I also... Um, for those who are still working on that or want an extra tool, there you can do muscle testing for yourself of, okay, is this being of the light and love? You can use a pendulum to test. There are many ways that you can test for sure. Uh, I want to talk, um, Kat, how, how would it feel to share some of what was coming through when we were dialing in about the galactics recently? We don't have to. It's a little bit, tiny bit <laughs> off topic, but it's just off topic. Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's cut it out. Um, I will say though, another important thing to note is value systems. And so I'm keeping it a little bit more general here, value systems where being in addition to energetic compatibility of, okay, this fits really well with my earth-based body, with my bioform, there is value compatibility. Mm -hmm. Earth beings who have been on earth, you know, so animals um, and some of the 
uh, the archetypal stuff and the ascended masters, the doctor spirits, beings who have lived an earth life, have a value system that is compatible with earth-based values. Beings who have not, um, the galactics being an example of that or various other light beings have a different value system. I learned this recently. Do not make assumptions that their value system is the same as yours because it might get you into trouble. I didn't get into anything serious, but it was a little bit of a surprise to note, oh, they were coming with this perspective, which makes total sense to me now that I understand it. And I was coming with my earth-based earth perspective. And so there is inherently some of that Again, translation aspects, Kat, like you were talking about one of the little bumps in the road of translating this energy, learning that simply by the fact that I live in a human body, I have this perspective. Simply by the fact that they have never lived in a human body, they have never lived on an earth, they have this perspective. And there needs to be some reconciling with that. It will come up eventually. Yes, because number one, they have an agenda. And their agenda, because time and space is so different to them, is, you know, it, it, it is something that maybe we can't even possibly comprehend the, the, the scale of the agenda that's at play for them. Mm -hmm. um, because we're like, whoa, I have my life and it's now. And we're kind of, we're, we have a hard time looking like 20 years into the future. So, um, we have to look at like, what is the agenda? Is the agenda, right? The values and alignment and also to be actually sometimes needing to have the conversation. Hey, I'm in a human body. I'm on earth. I need to eat. I need to make money. I need to sleep. I need to socialize. So I need you to assist me in these processes so that my body is not out of balance, so that my life is not out of balance, so that we can work together and be in collaboration. Mm -hmm. Just to remind you who I am at this moment. Yeah. And they'll be like, yeah, they oh, need to be told. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. Human. Got it. And sometimes, yeah. and sometimes you have to say, hey, remember me, I'm the human, I have a human body, like this is really intense for me right now, what's happening, can you back down the intensity, please? Mm -hmm. It's always okay to ask for that too. That's another really good point of if either you don't understand, sometimes I'll have to ask this, although less frequently or less now, because I think they sort of got the message of, you know, if I don't hear it or I don't understand or I'd like it to come through in a different way, then any being who's working with you, who's invested in having it be a comfortable experience is going to go, oh yeah, okay, here you go. And try a different way. Yeah. yeah. Cool. There's a couple more things I want to talk about. First is uh, sovereignty. So this is very important. So everybody repeat wherever you're at. I am a sovereign being. 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 Um, so this is just a very, very important phrase for us to utilize on a daily basis, when we're going into things, when we're coming out of things, uh, just to reaffirm our own sovereignty we are not being controlled by anyone or anything. We are, we are of service to the light and love, obviously, as our works uh, in the world show, but we are sovereign beings. We do not, I mean, sometimes I, if things are happening that I'm not wanting, I am a sovereign being. I do not allow anyone else inside of this body form at this time except for me. That is it. I am a sovereign being. I am a sovereign being. I am a sovereign being. And um, so this can be a really important tool to utilize for yourself, for, for yourself. Yeah. I will say, I will add to that, again, kind of couple, building off of a couple things that we just shared. It is okay to shut down your channel space if you're not feeling safe. It is perfectly okay. And then, because you can always reopen it, really. And any being, again, any being who is of the light and love, who wants to work with you, who wants to form this creative partnership, is going to be okay with that. There's not gonna be anything lost. Remember, I know we were talking about, well, you know, if this idea, if you don't act upon this idea, then it'll go to somebody else and they'll do something with it. There's, you know, no FOMO, right? No fear of missing out. You'll get to, 
you'll still get to play with the high vibration beings who are bringing energy to earth. It is better in my mind to err on the side of close down the channel, kick them out of your body. If you feel overwhelmed, if you feel like it's too much, because then you take a few minutes to yourself, do some shaking, you know, tap, tap yourself and really come back in your body and feel safe. I am grounded. I am completely present in my body. I am perfectly safe. I am divinely guided and protected and then reopen your channel and you'll have a completely different experience. Yeah. So we don't want to open the channel when we're sick, when we're super exhausted, when we're in a highly emotional state, we want to do this work when it feels in alignment with um, what we want to bring through. Mm -hmm. And so if we're depleted, it's not the time. Just today is not the day to do it. I'm going to go take a nap and it's okay. It's okay to cancel sessions. It's okay to not do it. It's absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I want to talk about one more thing, mm -hmm. which, so we've talked about, okay, well, you know, safety and, and like, you know, be aware, be aware because there are things that can be not fun. And, um, also I want to speak just to fear because a lot of times we maybe open up to something or we see something or experience something that feels you know, it, it doesn't feel good. Um, or we start watching YouTube videos and going down the rabbit hole of, um, you know, dark beings. And we start falling so deep into a fear state that our consciousness is actually calling in these, these energies. And it is even creating in a certain way, these uh, these energies to start to feed off of us because we're full of fear. Mm -hmm. So although we are highly recommending things to do for your own safety and well-being that we've outlined so far, we are also encouraging you very much so not to allow yourself to be in a state of fear around stuff that's coming up or coming through. Utilize the sovereignty, the boundaries, the clearing all of these things, if you're having trouble, reach out to us for sure. But allowing yourself to live in a state of heightened fear is not going to serve the work that you want to do. It's not going to bring in the, the quality of, of energies that you're looking to work with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And one last thing that I want to talk about is the invocation itself. A little bit about okay, love um, and checking, okay, are they of the light and love? You can get as specific as you want with how you're opening your channel. You know, my invocation goes something like this, where I'm calling upon, and then I kind of list who am I calling upon, universe, spirit guides, animal guides, archangels, assistants ascended masters, beings of the light and love, some variation of that, or um, elementals or forest spirits or, or galactic nations of the light and love, um, uh, you, you know, Mary Magdalene, etc., green Tara, and you can call upon and invoke them and, you know, feel yourself surrounded by your protection, and so then when somebody comes through, it's probably one of those that you called in, that's another thing, and then you can ask for further confidence Oh, 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 this sounds like this person, or I've, I've worked with Celeste, hey, who's sure of Nikola Tesla? Okay, we're good to go. Or, you know, he might say, I'm Nikola Tesla. I've never actually had him do that, but, um, <laughs> but you never know. And so it's probably one of these beings that you call in um or if you open up to i uh, i call upon spirit collective then that's a pretty broad spectrum right um but you know you can get as specific as you want and ask for clarification exactly and i call upon an invoke and so oh. Um, you know, even if, if you're like, I really want to work with this one being, and I believe that we even have, do I think we have an episode on, <clears throat> on 
connecting to beings, I believe that we did um, processes on, I, I don't know if we did that or not. <laughs> I feel like we did. No, I think I did a class on it. I did a class on it. It's in my healers portal group uh, on Facebook. If you go to the healers portal, I have a free class on connecting to beings and it's like, it has a lot of stuff in it. So um, you can really actually do the work of connecting to a specific being, calling in that frequency and working with it over time to develop a relationship, which is lovely to have relationships with these beings. Wonderful. Well, we gave you a lot of super valuable tools today, a lot of practices and suggestions. So please do feel free to reach out to us as you implement this knowledge. We'd love to hear from you. You can contact us on our Facebook page, Shaman Sister Sessions. You can reach out to us via email, shamansistersessions at gmail.com. If you missed any of our previous episodes, you can go back on our YouTube channel. We are also now on iTunes. Yay! And you can uh, find us, subscribe to our podcast. And Stitcher. Yes, and Stitcher. Please leave us a rating and a review. Uh, if you've enjoyed this work, we'd really appreciate it. And uh, as we continue to get ratings and reviews, we'll be more visible to people who need to hear this work. If you are interested, Kat, do you have any projects going on right now you want to talk about? I have a live and an online energetic mastery class coming up next week on Thursday is going to be in person in Carlsbad, California, and Saturday will be online um, October 7th, I believe, um, will be an online two-hour energetic mastery course in which I will uh, bring some physical embodiment techniques that are very helpful if you are doing channeling work and you want to um, be able to stabilize your system and work with these energies in a healthy way. And I also am starting my Light Warrior Mentorship six-month group mentorship program starting in mid-October. So it's about to begin and it's going to be amazing. And so if you are looking for a deep dive mentorship with group and individual work and retreat and um, very transformational experience, then reach out to me and let's jump on a call and, and chat about that. Mm -hmm. What you got, Michelle? Uh, well, first of all, I'm really excited to participate in your Light Warrior Mentorship program because uh, I love working with Kat and she's amazing, an amazing mentor. So you'd get to be in a group with me and Kat as your mentor. It's exciting. Um, I have, well, I just moved actually. So that's where a lot of my energy has been going lately. Currently though, I, for those of you in Portland, I am speaking, I'm actually doing my first keynote speech at a conference, the Superwoman Summit, the weekend of October 20th here in Portland. I will be speaking about queens and kings, the royal archetypes of the divine feminine and masculine. If you'd like to come to the conference, I have discount codes. You can go ahead and reach out again through our email, shamansistersessions at gmail.com. And let me know if you're interested, I'll get you a discount code for a ticket. Other than that, I I will be heading to the last week in October. I will be in Sedona teaching a little snippet of some of my advanced training work with my mother, Rosemary Lebecque, who is also a talent, very amazing, talented, intuitive shaman and healer. And we'll be teaching some of our advanced training curriculum that we developed together in Sedona. And um, I think that's about it. Yeah, that's all I got. So, okay. Oh, and if you're interested in working with Kat or with myself or with both of us together, please do feel free to reach out again through our email address. We do offer a special deal for those of you wishing to work with both of us, uh, a package of three sessions for a very special price and you get the best of both worlds with me and Kat. Mm -hmm. Yay. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Uh, always lovely to see you and I'll see you again next week and much love. Bye.